Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Denver Bears franchise. We continue season three, but we are finally here at the start of the double A season. We have a very good minor league system, but here's the thing they are still some years away from getting up to the show. But last year, we found a really good gem in Justin Maxwell. He was one of our uh, draft picks in the first year players draft in season number one and our number one pick was Jermaine Wetzel in that draft he you can just see 59 overall right now he still at least got three four more years until he's going to be ready but last draft we picked up some pretty good players one is DJ Weatherspoon I'm going to adjust his ratings back to what they were because this was before playing any games and he already has you know changes to his overall already and changes to his attributes I'm going to just change that back but he is a guy to watch out for. Now, Jonathan Champion won Minor Leaguer of the Year last year, but he is an older prospect at 26 years old. He's still progressing. He's still about two years away as well. But then there's the switch hitting Michael Taglia. He is 23 years old, very good first baseman. I think that him and Mohamed Willingham will have a battle to see who's going to get up to the show first. Now, we have some interesting other guys here at AA. Tyson Garraway, who actually was at AAA last year. I'm going to move him down to AA, give him an easier time this season, and let him develop just a little bit more. Max Buzzer is a pretty good outfielder, but everybody forgets about Eric Pena. He is a lefty, and he's a very good outfielder with A potential in our organization. So let's get this game underway as we start the AA season. Here is Justin Maxwell, one of our best pitchers in our organization as far as prospects go. He gets the first out. That's Zion Storm playing second base. Eduardo Nunez up for Binghamton, and he will swing and miss at some high heat. And that will be the first strikeout of the season for Justin Maxwell. As that brings up Tyler Pierce, one of our subscriber recruits. He will ground out to first, and we get through the first inning one two, three. Good start for Maxwell. We move on to the bottom of the first inning. Here is Zion Storm at the plate. We'll see what he can do. He is one of our few A potential infielders we have in the organization right now. I believe he and Mohamed Willingham are the only two, and he flies out to the outfield. Here is DJ Weatherspoon. He gets his first at bat of his college, uh, actually his professional career. Look at me getting excited. It's a home run. Only 349 feet, but here at Dunkin' Donuts Park, that field, that wall is very, very short in left field, and it gets over. Weatherspoon is an interesting guy. He is 74 overall, C potential right now, and he is better than some of our players at the MLB level right now. If he starts out hot, you never know. He could get moved up to AAA and even the majors in short order. Here comes up the switch hitting Taglia up with two outs. He gets an inside pitch, good swing and good timing, but it's just a fly out to right field. Now I'm envisioning that our double A team will have a very good offensive season because this Dunkin Donuts Park, very short walls in the outfield, meaning if you have a power bat, you're gonna hit a lot of home runs in this park. So Maxwell here in the second here, getting a pitch uh, batter to strike out on the outside fastball, 97 mile an hour. He's got some velocity on that pitch. That moves us to the fifth inning here, down by one. As we're up by one, here is Aaron Shunk, one of our third base prospects. He hits one to right center, and that one gets to the wall, and, and that's going to be a one-out double here off of Junior Rodriguez. 63 pitches for Rodriguez as he faces Tyler Miller, one of our catcher prospects. He goes to right field. That one will drive in a run, and now it is two to nothing here for our Hartford Yard Goats. Is Tyler Miller? We haven't highlighted him much, but he was one of our draft picks in season number one. Zion Storm up to the plate. He hits one hard to the left side. That one's got carry, and it does get run down. And a great catch that probably saved one, maybe two runs. And we go up two nothing. So we move to the top of the seventh inning. Here's Justin Maxwell still on the mound. He hangs one over the middle of the plate. This one's driven deep, and it will knock off of the wall, fielded, and that one will be thrown to the cutoff man. The throw will be just too late by Garraway, and it will be a 2-2 two two game here off of the 100th pitch of Justin Maxwell, and they will tie this game up as we go to our bullpen and bring in Carl Kaufman out of the bullpen, 24-year-old prospect. Let's see what he, what he can do. 
He faces his first batter, and that one will be a curveball in the dirt. Drop third strike, two outs. So now guys on second and third here, and Kaufman will get an easy ground ball to Zion Storm, but the throw to first is offline. So Zion Storm with the throwing error allows Binghamton to take the one run lead now. And now there's guys on the corners. This inning is still going, but he does get another ground ball. Okay, Storm make the throw this time, and he does. And that one will be the third out of the inning. But now we're down by one run. Tyson Garraway, the shortstop, is up to bat here in the seventh, and he gets a low pitch, and this one's driven deep, and that will be gone. You don't have to have much power to hit home runs in this park. This is definitely a hitter's park as far as that fence goes, and Garraway just turns on that one. You see the crowd knew it right away, and it's a 3-3 three three game. So this one goes into extras. Here we are in the 10th inning. Here is Juan Lovegood on the mound. He gives up a pitch to hit right down the left field line. That one will be a RBI double as we do play with that extra innings rule. So a run does come across. And now we are down four to three. We go to the bullpen and bring in 23-year-old Raleigh King. Let's see if he can get us out of this inning. And here's a fly ball to shallow left field. And the runner and the fielder will give chase and will run that one down as you move on to the bottom of the 10th. Max Buzzer at the plate. He is one of our draft picks last season. He gets one of his first at-bats of his professional career, and he flies out to center. But the throw to third is online. And that will do it. Hartford loses off of the outfield assist. And how about that throw? And Hartford does lose their opener here, 4-3. to three. But you can just see we have a ton of potential here at the AA level. DJ Weatherspoon is there. And also, Mohamed Willingham will be moving down to AA. I started him at AAA right now just to get him some at-bats. But he will move down to that AA level. So we do move on here in the month of May, and we face the Dodgers in a series, and we end up winning this game 8-1. to Ramel Koffer gets his third win of the season. Boy, is he pitching tremendously. But we do lose two of three to the Dodgers, but now I want to focus on a three-game set versus, you know, the team that we're really battling for for last place, to be honest, in this division, and it's the San Francisco Giants. They have been interesting. You know, they've drafted pretty weirdly, to be honest with you. They drafted a closing pitcher in season one in their first round draft pick in Dwayne Killian. But he is very, very good. 20 years old, 82 overall, 8 potential. He is an excellent closer for them. He's got a 108 whip. But what made it more interesting is that in season two, they did the exact same thing. They ended up drafting a closing pitcher in the first round. This is Abdo Chul. And he is 21 years old. He is one of our subscriber prospects who got renamed as a first round pick. Now, here we go on the road versus the Giants. Let's see what we can do here at Oracle Park. Here is the red hot Brendan Rodgers to start this three game set out. And he gets a hit up the middle and he is just on fire. It started in spring training where he hit above 380 and he's continued it so far this season. And he's off to an excellent start. Keston Hira at the plate. He hits one hard up the middle, hitting in the two spot. And this is what you like to see, a hit up the middle. And we need to get that average up. And Hera and Brendan Rodgers get us going in this game. So Anthony Banda giving up two hits so far. Here's a fly ball this time. Charlie Blackman to left field. We will tag up Rodgers in the throw. We'll be on line. And Rodgers is nailed at the plate. He's got 60 speed. It's not bad. It's not great, though, either. And that shows right there. What an excellent throw by the left fielder. That brings up Sanchez, who is struggling so far this year, hitting below 200. And he strikes out on the pitch in the dirt. We move on to the fourth inning. Sanchez gets a second shot at the plate. He hits one deep to left field. That one will get out of here. Home run for Gary Sanchez, his sixth of the year, 397 feet and that one hopefully gets him going and gets his confidence going as well. Jose Iglesias here with one out. He gets a pitch inside, and that one will be ball four. Iglesias has moved down in the order. He's now hitting at the six and seven spot, depending on who is pitching on the mound. And that brings up Hampson, who puts down an excellent bunt, and that one will be a single. 
And now we got guys on first and second here with one out. He toward Takahashi, our rookie, comes up. He hits one hard up the middle. What a great diving stop. Flip to second, on to first, but it won't be two. But that one will save a run as Takahashi almost came through with an RBI single. And that brings up Severino to the plate. 3-2 count with two outs. The runner was on the move, and it will be a grounder right back to the pitcher. So here is Severino on the mound now, dealing. He gets out of the fourth inning with a high pitch strikeout. And now we move on to the fifth here. Vern White at the plate. And it's going to be a pop-up to center. one nothing game in the bottom of the fifth now. And now we move on to the seventh. One more time. Here's Hunter Bishop at the plate. Inside slider. He fouls that one off. And with two strikes, he gets some to whiff. Way out of the zone, but he fooled them. And Severino looks good in this one. Here is Alcantara at the plate. He leads them in average so far this year. And he gets a hit here in the eighth inning. That one will be a ground rule double. And that one will tie this game up. And Sergio Alcantara comes through for the Giants, tying this game up in the eighth inning. That brings up Nick Goody out of the bullpen. We have put him into that closer role, and he has been tremendous. But he comes in earlier today, and he gets a strikeout that time to bring it to two outs here in the eighth. Is that brings up Tommy LaStella and he gets another strikeout. One thing I love about Goody is that if you need a strikeout in a situation, he's your best bet out of the bullpen. So this one goes on to extras here. That brings up Rodgers up to the plate. He already has a hit earlier today. He hits one to the right side, and that one will be stopped and flipped onto first. But now there's no outs with guys on first and third. Keston here at the play. He's one for three. Facing Jose Alvarez. Hits one down the right field line. That one gets to the wall. 309 and right. It gets to the sign. And will be a double here as it drives in one run. Still no outs in this inning. This is who you want up at the plate here as we get to the middle of our lineup. Josh Fuentes comes up. He hits one hard to the left side. That one gets through. We will score one. We hold up Hira at third. The throw was right on line. We remember that Rodgers got thrown out earlier, so we don't want to test that arm once again. Three to one now. Jose Iglesias at the plate now, and he watches an outside fastball, and that one will bring us to the bottom of the 10th. Robert Stevenson in the pitch now with two outs. Ground ball to short. This one will be a long throw, but Iglesias has it. And we get the first victory here in this three-game set. And what a win here in extras. How about the Bears? I love Luis Severino on the mound this game. He had 11 strikeouts, zero walks. What a game, seven innings pitch. We did not provide the run support that we wanted. We couldn't get him the win. But nonetheless, it's a win for the team. And we start off this series 1-0. So now we move to the second game of this series, and I want to quick manage this one. And right away, we get out to a huge lead, and we do not look back here as we move on to the eighth inning. It's 9-2 to two now, and to close out the bottom of the ninth, we will bring in Scott Ober to get us a few outs, and we get the victory, but that's not the biggest news. Keston Hira with a torn groin in this game will be out two to three months. This is a devastating blow for a couple of reasons. A, he's one of our youngest players on the team that is actually doing well. Brandon Rogers is having a good year, but I love what Keston here is doing. Even though he's hitting 246, that on base percentage is still good. 326 slugging is very, very low, but I think this was just temporary. He is a very good hitter. He's not the best of fielders, but now we're going to have to make some decisions here as far as our infield. I have a couple of guys in mind that I do want to eventually bring up pretty soon. Brian Simmons, I thought about it, but he's only 67 overall. Don't want to ruin his potential right now. He's 23 years old. He's a good hitter. He's got great power, but he's not the best fielder. I want to get him some more at-bats. So then I look at Nuki Ray, a guy that we've already brought up last year. Remember, he started last year at the MLB level just so that we had some depth. He only hit 154. But I think he is hitting a lot better this year at AAA, hitting 330. So I'm going to move him up and give him the start right away in this third game of this giant series. And he will be inserted at first base for the, at least the next two to three months. I'm not sure if he'll play every single day, but we'll see. So now in the third game, here we are about to try to get a sweep here and make a move in the division. And here is Hampson leading off today. He gets a base hit. 
So here is Ray up for his first at bat here at the Major League level once again. Here he gets a high pitch and he's behind that one. And that one will get the Giants out of the first inning. John Gray gets the start for us today as he is not pitching the greatest so far. But actually in this series, he's had a pretty low whip compared to his career average. So that's been very, very good. But here is a triple given up in the second inning. And now they have a man on third base here with one out. Hunter Bishop at the plate now. He hits one to right center. That one might score one. Takahashi gives chase, throws home, and the throw is on line and just not in time. But good throw by Takahashi. You love to see the defense, but it's 1-0 here for the Giants. We move this game on to the fifth inning now. Here is Gray still on the mound here with his 80th pitch. That's a ground ball up the middle and a good throw from Rodgers at second. That brings up Malik Smith now in the bottom of the fifth, and Gray once again, another out. Gray and Severino are pitching pretty well this season. I would say that Gray is going to be kind of a guy that sticks around. He hasn't shown any signs of declining in this series so far, and I really like what he's doing. So now in the sixth inning here, he's facing Orlando Arcio, who hits one deep to right field, and that one will be a fly out, and we get through six but no runs on the board for the Bears. So that brings in their number one draft pick in season number one, that's Dwayne Killian. He comes in early here, as now he faces uh, Jose Iglesias here to start out the ninth inning. Let's see if he can close it out. Here is Iglesias though, pinch hitting in this game. He had the day off and he gets the hit to start out the ninth inning. And now we have a man on first base with no outs. Here is Nuki Ray, who's getting his first start today. Hits one deep to left center. This one's got carry. It will hit off the warning track, but Iglesias is on his horse. He will score. Nuki Ray's thinking three, and he will get in with a triple here with no outs, and that one will blow the save here for Killian. You got to love it here. Nuki Ray getting moved up and already getting a big hit. And he is huge. He is six foot five, six six. You can already see him run around the bases. And he's got decent speed, 65. So that brings up Josh Fuentes to the plate here with no outs. Here's a diving catch. But Nuki Ray with 65 speed is going to make it home. It's two to one here for your Denver Bears. And we have the one run lead coming into the ninth inning. We bring in Nick Goody, who has been lights out this season. So here he faces Bobby Dahl back at the plate for his first batter. And that one will be a high pop up to center field. Outfield was playing back, but Hampson is under that one for the first out of the inning. Franklin Labor, who was 0 for 3 in this game, he just hits one right back to Goody. And it's two outs. Nick Goody has turned out to be such a great pickup from that Rule 5 draft as that brings up Orlando Arcia. 3 2 count. Hits one hard. And that one gets past Nuki Ray at first base. And now they have a base runner here. And the tying run is on first. That brings up Hunter Bishop. But we get him to swing and miss off of the inside slider. And we will get the sweep versus the Giants making a move here in the NL West. And we win this game 2-1, to one, a very close series. But we end up getting the victory here. And I love what I saw from Brendan Rodgers in this series. He went two for four in this game. He is just on fire so far. And we are making moves now. 16 and 22 after a lackluster start. We have now won four straight games. And you can just see our record on the road is actually decent, nine and 10, but we're not doing that well at home, seven and 12. Now Rodgers is hitting 337 this year. And I think that's earned him a spot to be the everyday second baseman. I was very, very hesitant about, you know, trading him away earlier in the series, but I'm glad I kept him around. He Now he's starting to hit the ball well and living up to that potential. So we move on here in the month of May. You can see we pl play the Brewers, the Giants, Angels, and Cubs. The last six games of this month are going to be tough versus the Angels and Cubs, but I'm up for it. So we will have one more day before, one more episode, and I think next episode we will do the draft and see what our future looks like. But we'll get to the month of June as well, and I want to see what we're made of here with a tough stretch of games coming up. And we'll see the separation we can maybe, you know, loosen, at least tighten 
in the division here in the NL West because right now we're the fourth best team. We're going to need to win some games here in the month of May. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you guys think of our double A squad as well as you saw earlier in the episode. And Brendan Rodgers, what do you guys think of that? You guys, I know a lot of you guys wanted him to, wanted to see him gone, but I'm glad we kept him around. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. There will be more Denver Bears franchise coming up soon. So stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I like getting money, I got time to get it. Target on me, so my car's a tenant. Dancing with the devil, I don't bargain with it. Bobbing in a dash, and the stick is with it. And I hit the 4 or 5 on the wet side. But I'm from the east side, that's how we slide. That's how we ride, yeah, yeah, that's how we ride.